Hey everyone, today we're going to be going over how to code a fully automated trading bot in the NinjaTrader platform. We're going to dive into what is the logic of the model that we're going to be using. We're going to walk through an open source indicator that I already published on TradingView to essentially understand the logic there and how we can convert it to NinjaTrader. I'm going to code the whole thing from scratch. And then at the end, we can play around with the backtesting and optimization tools that NinjaTrader has to offer so we can see what parameters might work best with this trade model. So first and foremost, this trade model was developed by Mickey and Jess right here, two amazing people in the trading space on Twitter or X. And you can see here that the purpose of this whole trade model is to build a three-step system that captures the 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock distribution of the four-hour candle. They called it Captain Backtest, and it captures concepts from the Power of Three, the AM Session Silver Bullet, and many other awesome models. So step one is to mark the highest high and the lowest low from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock, not including, essentially trying to capture the high and low of that four hour candle from six to 10. You can see here, Mickey says, if you wanna get fancy, you can look to see if we took out the previous day or weekly high or low as confluence, but we didn't. And so since they didn't, I did not include that part in the code. Step two, after 10 o'clock, wait for either the high or the low to get taken out. This is gonna determine your bias and it doesn't change for the rest of the day. Another key point is that this needs to happen before 11.15, and all these times are Eastern Standard. If it doesn't happen before 11.15, leave trading alone because it will likely be a choppy day. So we're marking out the range from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Whichever range breaks first, just with a wick, is enough to determine our bias. Step three is to wait for a retracement on the five-minute chart, and basically what you're looking for as entry criteria is a close above or below the previous five-minute high or low. So in a case like this, where he marks out, you have a range between six o'clock to 10, you pierce the high, so now your bias is bullish. You're looking for retracements, and you have these down close candles here. And once you get that, you're basically looking for a close above the previous high. So this high right here, price did not close above it in this candle, price didn't close above this high, et cetera, et cetera, until this high was fully closed through. And at that moment, that is the entry criteria. And then here, Mickey's just outlining some risk parameters with the stop loss values for ES and NQ. We'll take a look at this more in depth when we get to the backtesting and optimization of everything. So now that we know the criteria of the model, we can start looking at the trading view indicator that I made, which is open source. I will leave the link in the description for anyone who wants to check it out. And we can basically go through and try to understand the code before we convert everything to NinjaTrader. So going through all of our inputs first, we have a few things regarding time that we want to be aware of. So I have this previous range parameter where I'm essentially defining the time range between six o'clock and 10 o'clock. We're gonna use this previous range to get the high and low defined by this period of time. This variable take by is similarly outlining the time in which we wanna take either end of the range, and that is between 10 o'clock and 11.15. Our trade window or where we are allowed to take trades is anytime between 10 o'clock a.m. and four o'clock p.m. Now for the strategy itself, I have a couple retracement parameters here after talking in depth with Jess and Mickey. Basically, this first one is similar to what we saw on Twitter, where we just want to look for opposite closed candles after price breaks the range. And secondly, we can also look for whether price took the previous high or low. So for example, if we have a range and we took the range high, we want to see did price close through the low of the previous five minute candle? And I'm saying five minute because that's what this strategy was based off of. Obviously, with a script like this, you can use it on any time frame and any symbol and whatever, but I'm just going by how it was intended to be used. We can opt to use stop orders as well. So how we can use this is, again, say if we're bullish, we trade above the 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock range, retrace below, then close above a previous 5-minute high. We can use the high of that candle to say that we only want to enter if price trades into that. In other words, it will trigger an entry. And the reason this could be helpful is because if that doesn't get triggered and we just trade all the way back down into the other end of the range, then we avoid a loss from a scenario like that. Now with this fixed risk to reward parameter, we can toggle it to be either true or false. If it's true, then we will use the risk and reward parameter set here, where this risk is our stop, our reward is our profit target. But if we have this off, then all it will do is hold until the close of the trade window. The visuals here are just, you know, aesthetic stuff for the trading view as far as, you know, colors of different objects and everything like that. So it's nothing we really have to worry about. But getting into the logic, this is how we're checking to see if we're in a valid time range. So if we're in the range from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock Eastern, then this T pre-value will be true. And vice versa, if we're in our trade window from 10 o'clock AM to 4 o'clock PM, T trade will be true. And I'm also declaring a bunch of variables here that will make more sense as we go through the script. So just bear with me on that. 
these two are basically defining the high and the low of the six o'clock to 10 o'clock range. And these are float values. So we're storing the actual price. And here we're doing the same thing, except we're actually storing the objects. So this is the box that will encompass the range from the high to low. And then these lines will just draw out the high and low until they're hit. This right here is going to store our bias. By default, it is NA. If our bias is long, it'll be set to true. And if it is short, it'll be set to false. These two long or short will just store whether we have entered into a long or a short during the trade window. These two are concerned with the retracement criteria that we discussed previously. These two are going to store our stop values to be entered into a position. And all this is just going to be to draw risk and reward boxes on the chart. And again, this is only for the TradingView version. We're likely not going to dive too deep into the aesthetics on the NinjaTrader side. I'm just trying to review everything that we have going on here. So this function is just to draw the risk and reward boxes. We're not going to worry about that. But now we get into the logic of the 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock time range. So basically, these two statements right here are shortened if statements. So basically, when a new day starts, this value is NA. Once we enter the 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock trade window, we assign it to the high. And then every candle after that, we're just taking the larger of the two values. And it's basically the same thing for the low. On the first candle, we're just assigning it to the low of the first candle in the 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock range. Otherwise, we are taking the minimum value from that which was previously assigned and the current candle's low. This way, we're always encapsulating the highest and lowest point of the 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock range. And everything else here is just aesthetic. We're just drawing boxes and lines, so we're not going to worry about that. And like I said before, at the close of every trade window, we're basically resetting all the values that we stored above. So this previous range stuff is being set back to NA, and everything else is being reset so we can more easily use it for future days. So now we're in the take range between 10 o'clock to 11.15, where we need price to break either the high or the low of the 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock range. If it doesn't do that in this window of time, then all that's going to happen is that our bias is just going to remain as an NA value. It's not going to be set to true or false. And so later on, when we check what our bias is, we're going to know not to trade for the day. But basically, as long as we are in the 10 o'clock to 11.15 time window, we know that we are no longer adjusting the high and low values from the 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock range. So we can check if the high is greater than this range and we have not yet determined our bias. We can set it to true, which again will act as a long bias. Otherwise, if the low is less than the low of the 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock range, and again, we have not yet determined our bias, then we can set it to false and this will act as a short bias. And this stuff is just some chart drawing, so we can ignore that. All this is doing is drawing the cutoff time of 11.15, so again, we can ignore that. And now this is our main logic to actually trade. There's a drawing, so we're going to ignore it. Now we're dealing with the retracement parameters. So if you remember retrace 1, the only criteria was that we want to see opposite closed candles. So if our bias is long and we start trading above the high of the range, all we want to do is check to see if we have down closed candles after that point where we traded through the range, and vice versa if we broke the low of the range that we want to see up closed candles. So if our bias is true, again, this essentially means if our bias is long and the close is less than the open, so a down closed candle, then we can set this opposite close parameter to true. If our bias is false, in other words, short, and we get an up closed candle, then we can set it to true. If we're not using this parameter at all, then we don't care and we're just going to set it to true by default. Now for the next retracement criteria, we want to check to see if we took a previous low in a bullish case or if we took a previous high in a bearish case. So if our bias is true or long and the current low is less than the low from one bar ago, then we can set took high low to true. If our bias is false, in other words short, and the current high is greater than the previous high, then we can set it to true. And again, if we're not using this at all, then we don't care and we can just set it to true by default. Now we can check for our entry criteria. So if our bias is true or long, and we close above the high from one bar ago, and all these other criteria are met, where we're basically saying opposite close is true, took high low close is true, and we have not yet entered a long position, then what we're going to do is set long to true, set our buy stop to the high, so we want to enter on a break of the current bar's high, or if our bias is false and we close below the previous low, then we're going to set short to true and sell stop equal to the low. And now this is where we're actually entering a position, so if long is true and we have not yet entered a position, then we're going to enter long with a stop price of that candle's high that we mentioned before. Otherwise, if we're not even using stop orders, then this will just be NA and we're just going to enter immediately as the next bar opens. Similar for short, if short is true and we have not yet entered a position, we're going to enter short with a stop being that candle's low or, not, or if we're not using a stop at all, we're just going to enter on the open. Now, if we're using the fixed risk to reward parameter, 
we're basically just going to save the prices of our stop loss and profit targets. So this line is going to be checking if we just entered a position by saying if our position size is zero one bar ago and it's not equal to zero currently. In other words, if we are in a long position, our position size will be greater than zero. If we're in a short, it'll be less than zero. So if we're greater than zero and we're in a long position, then again, our entry is going to be our buy stop or the high of the candle that made our entry criteria. Or if we're not using stop orders, we're just going to set it to the open. And then from whatever this value is, we know that our risk is going to be our entry minus risk in a long situation. In a short situation, it's going to be our entry plus the risk. And our reward is obviously going to be our entry plus the reward value in a long position. And in a short position, it's going to be entry minus reward. So now we can say if we are in a long trade, our position size is greater than zero, then we want our strategy to exit the long with a limit price of the reward that we just set up here and a stop price of the risk that we set up here. And this is just some drawing tools. And then again, we have the same for the short position where we have position size that's less than zero. We're going to exit with a limit of the reward price that we set here and a stop of the risk price that we set right here. And then finally, if we are no longer in the trade window, then we're just going to close all positions because for all intents and purposes, it is the end of the day or EOD. So that is how the trading view version works. Again, it's in the description and completely open source for anyone who wants to check it out. Now we can get into building it in NinjaTrader. I may end up splitting this into a couple separate videos just so they don't go too long. So if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and part two should be coming shortly. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.